Morocco have beaten Spain. One of the World Cup favourites are out of here, they're gone. Morocco go through to the quarterfinals. Are they actually good? I think they might be, but let's try and work out how they beat Spain. This is how Spain lined up, this is how Morocco lined up. Now, what you see here is two very, very different types of teams. Spain like to be expansive, open up the pitch, play nice tippy-tappy passes all over the place, get really nice and wide, expand the pitch, get players really close together so they can tap, tap, tap their way to victory, or in this case, a defeat on penalties. Because what Morocco do is the opposite. They're a really tight block, so where Spain are nice and expansive, Morocco are not. They are very much a 4-1-4-1 or a 4-4-2 really tight block. And for most of the first half, what you saw was this tight block. So it's like the antithesis of what Spain are trying to do. There's no right way to play football, but uh, often one type of football wins. Doesn't make it right or wrong to choose whichever, whichever one you like, doesn't really matter. This one won. So what they did here is this 4-4-2 block. Now, the idea of this is that in this block, everyone's almost tied together by string. So wherever the ball goes, if the ball goes wide, they shift to this side of the pitch. If the ball goes to the other side of the pitch, they'll all shift across. If Spain get players out in the wide areas, say the ball goes out to the left here, and they have Asensio and Gavi, they get players across straight away to try and block them out. And there's always a spare man, Amrabat, helping to make sure they can double up. So there's never a 3v3 or a 2v3. It's always an outnumbered on Spain when they got the ball wide. And the ball has to go backwards and in like a horseshoe. There's no way in. Because the idea with this 4-4-2 block is that it's so compact and so rigid and defensively aggressive that there is just no way to get the ball through. It has to go wide. And then because they're really good in the box uh, with big tall defenders like Agur and, and Saiz, it means that players like Asensio, not really a striker, can't really do anything with the ball if it's crossed in. And so the ball would be uh, turned over, they win the header, and then they can break with their fast lads. They've got Hakimi a fullback, Masrawi a fullback, Bufal's really good in the wing, and then Nezri we get forward as well. And these are the players they always attack with, if they can, into the space, and you create space by drawing your opponent out so that they leave space in behind. Now, what Spain were doing was passing the ball around, trying to expand this so that you can leave little gaps between the lines of players so that eventually you can thread a pass through. But what they do when they drop this deep eventually is that it's a 4-4-2 looking like a block, but it actually changes quite a lot to being more of a 4-1-4-1 because whichever side the ball is, this midfielder steps forward to help with the block, Amrabat covers in. Amrabat is one of the most important players in this team, one of the most... Uh, I would say one of the best performers in the World Cup so far. He is vital to how Morocco play, breaks up everything, super aggressive, celebrates every tackle like it's the best thing he's ever done. But everything Morocco do is off the ball. So while Spain are amazing on the ball, Morocco are amazing off it. And that's where they've won the game. Because although they didn't score from one of these fast breaks, they were causing Spain a bit of trouble. And what Spain were trying to do while trying to uh, open them up, like a clam, trying to open them up and get the ball through or and eat the players, what they were doing was keeping it tight, so it just forced Spain to pass around in this horseshoe. There's no way through. That's what the idea is. Now, it's quite risky doing this, because eventually a good team like Spain can break you down, and all it needs is for one lucky ball into the box and a, a little shot there to, to ruin everything for you. So, in the second half, what I think the manager did for Morocco was shift this from being dangerously close to their own goalkeeper slightly higher up. So rather than starting the block here, trying to show the ball wide from a very deep position, in the second half, they started a bit higher up. So instead of the first line being here, it's now here. Uh, and that means they're closer to goal. So if they want to counterattack, they've got a higher starting place. That's good. But it also means that Spain then suddenly have space in behind this line to get in behind. So Luis Enrique seems to recognize this very quickly. Asensio went off, on came Alvaro Morata. That means that Spain have a player who can get in behind this high line and they might finally be able to get some joy out of this Morocco defense, who were not leaving them any space at all. But as it came to pass, they kept defending brilliantly in a lot of it, not Amrabat, it was from N Neziri, this striker here. So his job is to stop the ball getting into Spain's midfield. And he did this against Croatia as well to take Modric out of the game and take Croatia's midfield of Brozovic, Kovacic, Modric out of the game, basically is what they did. And what they do here is that while Amrabat is the anchor behind and this 4-1-4-1 shape is here, what Nezri does is stand blocking the pass into Busquets. So if the ball goes to Llorente here, and Nezri will position himself so he's blocking the pass into Busquets. Then it means Amala can step up on Pedri. It means that Unahi can step up on Gavi. Now the wide players aren't going too far away because you don't want to create space between players so um, Spain will be able to pass through you. They're still trying to stay tight. The fullback's looking after the wide players, still making sure they're quite tight together, like they're holding onto that rope. Uh, Almost over here. 
Albo would come over, track by Ziek, and this is what they were doing. So then if this player overlaps, Bufal suddenly tracks him. Everyone's busy. And so what that meant for Spain was that Rodri and Laporte were the ones with all the ball all the time. But if you've got the ball up here, and you float it up here, Amrabat's going to win the header, Saiz is going to win the header and knock it back, and then they're going to break with the fast lads. That's what they're going to do. It's all part of the plan. They don't mind not having the ball because they're going to leave space in behind to attack it. And so what you eventually saw is Pedri couldn't get on the ball, and that's why Pedri started dropping into right back, which is exactly the same thing that Luka Modric started doing for Croatia, and it's something you saw with like, Kevin De Bruyne for Belgium as well. They couldn't get on the ball, so they had to move out of position. As soon as you move Pedri out here, look how far away he is from the goal. He can't then make the incisive pass that gets you in. So everything Spain wanted to do, they couldn't do, because Morocco had them locked down and held them out for uh, the draw, to beat them on penalties. Now, it's not that they didn't create chances themselves either, they did, but they have to create in different ways. They don't have the same profile of player. Amrabat is not Busquets, Amala and uh, Unahi are not Gavi and Pedri. So Spain play perfectly to their strengths, Morocco play perfectly to theirs, and it's turned out that on this occasion, the way that Morocco play has won. Doesn't make it better, but it does make them really, really good. And that is how Morocco beat Spain to get into the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Very impressive. If you like this analysis, if you did enjoy it, please do subscribe to our channel. Uh, we've got 300,000 subscribers now. Thank you for subscribing if you already have. It's very nice of you. Go Morocco! If you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you did like it, you might be interested in How to Watch Football, TIFO's illustrated book. It's 52 rules for understanding the beautiful game on and off the pitch, and it is the perfect holiday gift. How to Watch Football is out now in stores and online. See the link in the description to find out more, and thank you for watching today's video.